Thank you all for coming. I know this is a little out of the place to do the elections. I know we moved in here, so I appreciate that. Um, you all can join me in the, in the Father's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two, uh, Mike Gonzalez, 1632 Sam Houston Drive, City Hall Operations, and wants to be called. So I'm going to go ahead and call him right now. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> 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 Mr. Gonzalez. Hi, good afternoon. And one thing is we are going to move to three minutes for citizen communication. So from two minutes, we're going to move to three minutes. So you have three minutes. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Now I have 60 seconds to think of what else I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you all very much for the opportunity to speak. And it sure looks good uh, to have you up here, Mayor. Congratulations again. I, was, uh, uh, I would like to take this time to talk about efficiency. Um, efficiency in city government. Um, having to do business with the city of Harlingen is a little rough right now. And hopefully with all this energy, uh, it can carry on to be able to improve all the departments, in particular the building department. Right now I've, I've had a couple of experiences in trying to get a permit accomplished uh, for, for an apartment complex and, uh, you know, uh, efficiency is important uh, if we're going to attract outside businesses to be able to provide housing for the citizens of Harlingen. I'm not sure if any of y'all have ever had the opportunity to dial the 216-5000, which is the City Hall primary phone number. Uh, by the time you get through with the entire menu, um, which is 240 seconds, you kind of forget about why you call, right? And you never get anybody live, and, uh, you know, that's possibly something. It sounds so small and minor, but truly, on the... Uh, it's truly important, right? If somebody has not ever done business with the city of Harlingen and they're calling that, 240 seconds is an eternity from the time the call starts to the time it gets all the, all the way through. I know the city employees are great. I, I know they're trying. But maybe a little bit of efficiency is something that all of us can try to help out. Um, we do have a, a great city, a lot of potential for, for growth. and analyzing each city department to see how it can improve itself. So, you know, we can attract what is important to the city, housing, revenue, and income. Uh, so I just encourage you all to please take that to heart. And uh, by all means, call that number when you have 240 seconds. <laughs> and hear it out and find out why it's so difficult to get through to somebody at City Hall. But on a positive note, I'm excited for everything that Harlington is going to accomplish. Thank you very much, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you. We, um, we have Mr. Desi Martinez regarding streets. Hi. And me, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to, to see this new leadership and look forward. And I agree with the gentleman. I used to be a builder in this area. But uh, it's regarding the uh, item number seven, uh, SIP, the Street Improvements Program. Uh, Mr. Martinez, your, I'm sorry, can you just, your, your uh, name address? address. 1806 Haverford Boulevard. Used to live in 1229 South E, the other half of my life here. At any rate, um, regarding the SIP, they are, the list, this, uh, the engineers presenting, I haven't seen it. I don't think any of us have seen it, uh, that he's presented for y'all to prove. But my, uh, my cousin, Jamie Muniz, that lives on Taft Street, 
And of course, our dear mayor, I used to uh, be a principal out there at Coakley and, and uh, those schools, that cluster of schools out there. Taft Street is a collector street that needs improvement and it should be done in the summer when kids are out of school because it collects children, parents, and workers, et cetera, all the way from the east side, Treasure Hills, down to the east side of school. I don't know if this young engineer just came on board, realizes the traffic count in that area, but it's fantastic, and it's in, the street is in real need of street repairs, and has been. Uh, in, uh, Buchanan, excellent, it's improved. Uh, all the collector streets, they're off. But be, uh, no. Yes, but Taft hasn't. So please uh, amend it to be done, if possible, this summer. It schools out. And I appreciate your time on that. Thank you, Mr. We have no more citizens' communication. Thank you so much. So this proclamation is for Elder Abuse Awareness Month, whereas older adults and people with disabilities of diverse backgrounds contribute to the well-being of this city by working, caregiving, volunteering, and actively preserving customs, rituals, and traditions. And as we age, we build momentum by accumulating knowledge, experience, insight, and wisdom that can be shared to enrich our community and Whereas abuse of older adults and people with disabilities in a community concern affecting thousands of people across Texas and abuse affected more than 118,208 older adults and people with disabilities in Texas in 2021. And whereas abuse, neglect, I'm sorry, abuse against elder adults and people with disabilities is grossly underreported because of social stigma embarrassment and fear and adult abuse affects men and women of all income and ability levels, all cultural and ethnic backgrounds in all communities. And whereas elder abuse is everyone's business, it's important to strengthen our efforts to prevent, report, and address elder abuse. Now therefore, I, Norma Sepulveda, Mayor of the City of Harlingen, Texas, in recognition thereof, do hereby proclaim the month of June 22, 2022 to be Elder Abuse Awareness Month in Harlingen, Texas, and urge all residents to work together to reduce abuse and neglect of older adults and people with disabilities. special proclamation and it's for Mr. Uh, Mayor Sam Lozano. Will you approach? You're amazing. This is a true pleasure for me to do. Let me just grab you over here so that way there we go. Okay. Hey, boy, this is my wife. Hi there. <laughs> oh, hi, Katie. Hi. The memories in the making. Okay. So this proclamation is for you, Mayor. It says, whereas Samuel Sam Lozano served three terms as mayor from 1970 to 1972, and 1983 to 1987 as city commissioner for seven terms, 
from 1962 to 1970 and 1977 to 1983. Wow. <laughs> and um, whereas he served during World War II, then attended college on the GI Bill to become a lifelong educator. And whereas Mr. Lozano became the first Hispanic mayor of Harlingen in 1970. His, his foremost accomplishments include the development of Victor Park and garnering pensions for public safety officials. There, now, therefore, I, Norma Sepulveda, mayor of the city of Harlingen, and on behalf of the Harlingen city commissioners, do hereby deem it an honor and pleasure to extend this recognition to Mr. Sam Lozano for his past accomplishments as former mayor and city commissioner for a total of 20 years in public service, and hereby proclaim June 1st, 2022 as Sam Lozano's day and urge all citizens to extend to Mr. Lozano our sincere appreciation for his past dedicated services and continued support to the city of Harlingen, a citizen who has earned the respect of the community, family, and friends. In witness thereof, I, Norma Sepulveda, mayor of the city of Harlingen, Texas, have here unto set hand and cause the seal of the Harlingen, Texas to be affixed on this first day of June 2022. I figured I'd read it all because it's such an, a privilege and an honor for me to provide the keys. This is the first time I do this, so it's exciting for me, the keys to the city, and I couldn't think of a better person to give it to but the first Hispanic mayor of the city of Harlingen. The first person <laughs> to create history right here. was a totally different Harlingen and so the fact that Mr. Lozano was able to be mayor at that time was truly a historic moment so I hope everybody remembers where they were today when Mr. Lozano got the keys to the city of Harlingen because he is well deserving. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. I've been wanting to meet you and it's been a privilege really to have served when it was difficult here in this community to be in government, but thank God that uh, through efforts and hard work, uh, we were able to penetrate the wall that seemed to separate El Mexicano. And, and, and it wasn't easy, but thank God we accomplished it, and so now we're we're one, one city that is doing everything possible <coughs> from all angles and all languages and differences of opinion to be here next to a woman mayor. <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> 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 I, I, I wasn't expecting to say anything, but uh, I wanted to meet, have met her before I even got this close to her, but congratulations for being um, mayor. Thank you, mayor. And, uh, <laughs> from mayor to mayor, we have a great city, we have great people, as you can see, and I'm sure that we're in good hands and it's with humble heart i give i sit in this little heart 
the opportunity really to serve. And uh, I never thought someone from the west side would ever be a mayor of Arlington. But not only a mayor, but now a woman mayor. So we've come a hell of a long way. Sí, se puede. And thank I see a few people here that I haven't seen in a long while. I think that's of all, not there. So again, thank you for being here. And thanks to the commission, you know. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody wants a picture with you because you're a celebrity. Item number two on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We have the regular meetings of February 2nd, 2022. Are there any changes to the minutes? No? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, we have the consent agenda, items 3A through 3G. Do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number four, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution to appoint Norma Sepulveda Mayor as the primary member and Gabriel Gonzalez, city manager, as the alternative member to the RGV MPO policy board. Gabe? Um, mayor, member of the commission, um, Chris Basel was a former mayor uh, that was appointed to the uh, RGV MPO. Uh, we now need to appoint our new mayor, Norma Sepulveda, as the primary member and myself as the alternate. So uh, I recommend approval of the item. Motion for an approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Sure. Motion carries. Uh, Mayor, before we get to item number five, I would like to point out that we've had a char charter amendment, and in that charter amendment, the voters of the city uh, 
Harlingen voted to reduce the number of airport board members from nine to seven. Uh, so the commission may want to take up uh, the makeup of that board through by considering <coughs> item number 12 uh, before item number five. Okay. Hey, Mayor, we, we just had the, the city election. So we're going to go ahead and, and move um, item to item number 12 first. And that is board appointments. Do we have any, any board appointments? I, I'd like to appoint Mike Garza to the Harlingen Waterworks. I have none here. And I have one, um, Kirk no, here. Sh Schubert, is that right? Uh, Kirk Schubert to the Animal Advisory Board. Do you have anything else, Commissioner Uribe? No, ma'am. Oh, I, yes. Um, like I'd like to um, go on the fact that we just had the, the charter amendment. Um, I'd like to retain um, seven of those slots, right? Um, so what I'd like to recommend is is um, uh, the airport board's uh, seat one and two. Uh, they presently being held by Colonel uh, Dowling and Mr. Resendez, Tito. Uh, seat three, uh, Ricky Leal. Seat four, Vicky Moore. Seat five, Judy Ezell. Seat six, Nick Consiglio. And seat seven, Ronaldo Rubiano. I'd like to make that motion. Do you have a second? Second. I'm confused. Are we on uh, back to five or are we still on 12? We're on 12. We're on 12. But based on. Commissioner Uribe is saying, based on the recent election and the change in the composition of the airport board, he's moving to retain seven because that's what the voters elected to do. But I don't see anything on 12 for the airport. It says airport right there, the Where? first item. Ah, bingo, the short word. Very good. Yes. Got it. First, <laughs> good first job. one there, Under Commissioner eight. Mesmer. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we're going to go back to item number five. Consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading amending, amending the Harlingen City Code, Chapter 8, Aviation Article 2, Section 8.86, to replace it with a new Section 8.86, Created composition appointment, removal, terms, and vacancies, and ethics. Council? Uh, yes. An, uh, an ordinance amending Harlingen City Code Chapter 8, Aviation Article 2, Section 8.86, and to replace it with a new Section 8.86. Is there any discussion? Do you have a motion? Motion is approved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item number six, consideration and possible action to repeal ordinance 06-05, chapter 38, section 38-103, establishing new tipping fees for non-residents and commercial establishments, and section 38-105 to limit the exemptions allowed. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, the current tipping fees have not changed since uh, 2006, and we believe that a consequence of that has been that we started receiving a lot of non-residential and commercial um, establishments coming to our uh, transfer station facility. And so there is a <coughs> misconception out there that we have an active landfill, and in fact, we have a closed landfill with a transfer station, which means that we transport everything to a contract landfill we currently have with Bronzeville. And uh, from time to time, we've had to actually close our transfer station because of the amount that we started receiving being that we are the lowest price. So we did some research, uh, and we found out that the prices range anywhere from 36 to $85. And we are proposing to increase that our fees, our tipping fees, to the rate of 93.50 per 2,000 pounds or per ton. Uh, 
anything less than 2,000, anything over than 2,000 would be at a prorated rate of 9350 uh, uh, to go above that, just to be prorated within our system. Uh, we are looking to do this sometime in August 1st to allow time uh, for people to get adjusted. We're going to put out some advertisements, put it on social media, uh, get with our, our regular people that come in. Uh, in addition to that, we have been contacted by TCEQ and they recommend that we uh, do a $10 fee for any commercial uh, that is running our streets without a covered top that has any type of debris or construction material. They need to be covered um, so that they're not, you know, they don't have papers and stuff flying around throughout the city. So that would be a standard fee for any load that is uh, identified that does not have a cover. And for the Section 38105 exemptions, uh, we want to uh, not allow double axle trailers to come in and no trailer longer than eight feet. And how are you uh, suggesting to communicate that to the um, to the clientele that you're, you're receiving? Right, so, so again, we, we want to give like a grace period all the way to August. We're not going to, if this passes tonight, we're not, it's not going to take effect until August Yeah, but, but do you plan on giving like, like a flyer every time yes. they come in, some, something with a receipt? Yes. And, Flyers, we're going to have posted, we're going to post it on social media, we're going to post it on our website, and we're going to mail out <coughs> to uh, current residents that we already have on, I mean, current construction establishments that we already have on file. And this is not going to affect our residential no, rates, no. Those, will, those will remain the same. This is only for non-residential and commercial establishments. Nice. We're going to have $10 fee that we're going to be charging for non-covered. Does that go to the PCT or are we going to be able to keep that? That is, I believe that is for us. Yeah, that stays with us. But it's a TCQ recommendation. Right, okay. Did uh, on I, I just have a question on the double axle because you know you see me there all the time. Yes, sir. And a lot of other roofing companies, local roofing companies, have that double axle. So are we not going to be able to? That's that is what we're proposing. Okay, so if so, that's going to impact a lot of the bit the local businesses here. So what that means is that we're going to have to go out to other facilities or. Right. Or is there, can we change that to where we can still be included if we're in the city or for residents, or can we exclude that that section? And is is uh, who's recommending that? So we, we looked at several scenarios. We don't have a mechanism in place to track whether they're inside the city. Like we, we discuss if, if a commercial establishment has a, a building permit per se, and so that they're working within in the city of Harlingen doing business in the city. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we don't have that the software that we use for our scale is proprietary, so it's not linked to our outside uh, building permits. It's not connected to any of those. We are looking uh, to upgrade that system. That system has also not been upgraded, but we don't have a mechani mechanism in place right now to be able to track it. But the consensus was to just not allow it at this time because of the fact that we've had to close. <coughs> time. Okay, but again, that punishes the local businesses here, and that's... I personally, because I own a roofing company, that's going to impact my business and a lot of other businesses. So, can we? Couldn't let me ask, let me ask some. Couldn't couldn't use um, the building permit or the construction permit that they're using for that project. Couldn't they bring that with them to prove that it's from within the city? It, it, so that's what we discussed. But unfortunately, we have no way to verify it that it's that it's there or not. We. We would have to stop and call the building permits and see if it's active, because right now we don't we don't have the system. And but, our, but but hold on, but it, that could be uh, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. That could be included in the permitting process itself when they go pull the permit, that the building department would notify the landfill at the same time, right? That hey, this project's going on and they're authorized to dump between this because they, you're given right, estimated. Get the CO. I mean, it's just a it's, it's a suggestion, right? right? To not I, I understand his point. But what, it, uh, what I think they're trying to do is, is uh, because we're so low, we don't want to encourage people from outside the valley to come in and dump, and then we got to go pay pay it back to <coughs> ship it somewhere else. No, I agree. So I get that, but 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 we don't have roofing companies don't require permits. We don't have a building permit. So let me oh, just want, ask this: Is you want to? Can we require a permit for the roofers? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. <laughs> let me ask this: Can we go oh, ahead? So you don't can want to we, pay nothing. Can we go ahead and approve this and then make an amendment on the second reading and discuss this later? I, 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 suggest, uh, I, I suggest we approve it as is 
and then maybe you can meet with the staff and, and see if you can come up with an alternative. Yeah, we can make an amendment on so the second reading. Approval. So yeah. it, it's going to affect local businesses, small businesses here in Harlingen, correct? Yes. If, they, if they have trailers that, that are larger than eight feet or double axle, so the, the local small businesses that have a regular trailer or use their long bed pickup trucks and stuff, no, it won't affect them. But, the but local contractors it might, that, yes. so where would, so Harlingen contractors that are local contractors that are used to going to the facility, where would they have to go now? What's well, they, the they can continue to come. They're just going to pay the, the, well, if they have a double axle, they can go to Bronzeville, they can go to La Feria, they can go saying. to Edinburgh, yeah. Donna, that's where they that's what we're getting them from right now. That's that's what we started doing the research. And what's the what I, I, I guess I didn't follow. Why are you changing it? What is the purpose? Be, because because we're the lowest in, in I guess in the market right now. We're getting overwhelmed from outside sources. For example, contractors from Bronzo are driving all the way here to dump it so that we can transfer it, put it in a trailer, and take it back to Bronzo. There's issues with the, with the with the transfer station because we've had to shut it down on occasion. Right. But we're trying to actually make it. Uh, so that they're encouraged to go someplace else, but to Commissioner Fuentes' point, we can actually look at the ordinance to actually accommodate those double axle trailers by charging uh, an added fee if they still want to dump at our land. Right. That's what I was, I, was, I mean, it seems like it would be smarter, <coughs> not smarter, but maybe a different, um, an alternative would be to charge a fee instead of saying no, we're, we're not going to allow it because it is going to affect, and it's especially right with the price of gas and sending local businesses to Brownsville. If there's no way to avoid that, then I'm sure that they'd like to. They, I would imagine that they'd prefer to pay a small fee instead. Yeah, so th that was my point. Of, of I think we can pass it as is, and let uh, you know, come back with staff with a with an alternative or, or a solution. Sure. Ready to go? For registration for local business. Awesome. We can, we'll have to come up with something. Rodrigo, how much do they charge in La Feria? $85. $85. That's a transfer station that sends it to my book for Republic. So then local businesses could go to La Feria and it would be cheaper than even coming here? Yeah. No, it's more expensive. Huh? La Feria is more expensive. You just said it's 85 bucks. We're going to be 93 well, Yeah, but right now we've been more expensive. It's still, it's still, to the mayor's point, we're, now you're asking local businesses to go outside of the city of Orange, and, and it's almost like you're punishing local businesses. And I know it's not that far, but believe me, pulling a trailer with that much tonnage so much time and, and going a couple of times a week does does uh, does make an impact. So again, I, I, w I would agree with um, okay, Mr. Gonzalez and Commissioner Ribes, let's just go ahead and pass as is, and on the second reading, we'll come back with an amendment to figure out what, how we can make some kind of compromise or a fair compromise. So I would like to make a motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Rodrigo. Item number seven, consideration and possible action to approve the proposed list of streets within the 2022 to 2023 Streets Improvement Program. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Craig Cook, Assistant City Manager. Before I make some remarks, I have a couple of page changes to give you for your books. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> The, the last guy used, used to do that a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the last guy did that a lot. <laughs> Hey, this looks like fun. <laughs> that you were rushing to, that you were going to jump. So the purpose of the page changes is to inform you that we've made a couple of slight uh, additions and, and deletions to two lists. Uh, we are currently finishing the design 
of the 2122 list. Uh, we hope to put that on the street uh, this month or next, and then we'll start paving in October. And to that list, we are adding an additional 650 centerline feet of Clifford uh, Street uh, in the uh, Treasure Hills area. We're doing 4,765 uh, 4, feet of that street already. We want to add the last two blocks to connect it to Hain, uh Street. Uh, that's about a 12% increase of the work on Clifford. So that's the addition for the work that we will be paving next year. And then the list that I am seeking your approval for is the list uh, that we will be designing this year, uh, sorry, this next budget year, and then paving in the following year. And to that list, uh, we are deleting uh, one block of Garfield Avenue there at the cemetery. It's almost an alleyway, and we repaved it a few years ago, so it, it really doesn't need to be repaved at all. And of course, that will save us some money. And so the, the purpose of the new map, the last page I gave you, was to delete uh, Garfield from that map. May, may I ask I, how you come up with the criteria of which, uh, how are you prioritizing the projects right now? The, these two lists are the, are the last lists of efforts done several years ago, I would say four or five years ago, uh, at least one city engineer ago. Um, we are trying to get under contract a firm to come in and assess all of our streets, much like Google Earth drives around and takes pictures of, of, of buildings, uh, this company takes, takes pictures of roads and assesses them on a scale of one to 20. And when we get that list, then we will prioritize uh, the really bad ones from the really good ones. How long does uh, and, that take? And, and create what, What's more the time lists. frame on that? I mean, how, how, does that, is that like a year process, two year process? Uh, well, they're only here a couple, of, once they get here, they'll only be here a couple of weeks doing that and then probably a month to assimilate the data. Well, well because the, the, the question I have is, um, obviously some streets are, are utilized more than others and whatnot, yes. right? But, I, you know, I'd like to see some kind of calculation where every district is represented equitably, right? Because they're all paying the same tax, uh, the the map is now drawn up pretty evenly across. Where you got you know so many people in each district, right? Um, um, and it, it, it's divided property. So what I what I, I don't want to see is maybe like district two or district three or that they get skipped over on a cycle, right? Yes. Um, because uh, what is our, are we doing? Is it up to four million now? The uh, budget? We, it, no, it's about two ish. Okay, well, it, it's grown, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and even if you put all that into one district, it, 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 it makes a, it, it's, a, it's a great impact, but it's a very small impact, right? I mean, right. It's, not, it's never got enough money. Yeah. But it's, I it's think, a, I think as long year. as we're distributing the monies equally every year, that, that every district at least gets <laughs> something, right? That, that their tax dollars are, are, are being, it's not like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of you next time. No, every, you know, I think if we, if we keep that up, um, it's just a more level, and I and I can see the map. I think everybody's getting work done, right? Yeah. But but um, yeah, that's just my concern. So like the what I don't know what area, uh, what district is in the pink, right? Obviously, not getting a lot of work done. As and and this green area also not right. It's more concentrated in the center and out here, and that's just my visual. But again, that's just that year's this year's. I should say next year's right next year's work right 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 so um i just when do you think you can bring that back to the commission as far as uh, getting that study done because that would help a lot right well as i say we're trying to get them under contract and um we won't have the results for several months okay. um, and but we don't really need another list until we done these design the, the list i hope you're about to approve. right okay i got you no, <laughs> okay. i understand Great. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Great. Um, I, I drove around my district because once I saw this on the agenda packet that we received, I, I drove around the, my district uh, looking at the specific streets um, that were for my district that we're going to get worked on. And I wanted to, I, like earlier today, I was driving down Brenneman <coughs> Road and I went down that street from Stewart Place all the way to Dilworth. And um, 
that street, in my opinion, is not as bad off as other streets in my district. I um, and I wanted to substitute, um, because one that I've been getting a lot of calls from is the South Palm Court. From Garrett Road all the way down to, I believe it's Blue Media Lane. I think that's the name, um, Blue Media Lane. Um, it's on, so South Palm Court from Garrett all the way down to Blue, yeah, Blue Media Lane. I would like to substitute that one for the Brenman, the Brenman Road from Stewart Place to Dilworth. Would, would that be the same mileage? Or same Honestly, I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm suggesting it. Yeah. I don't know. The details of how long it is and stuff like that, I don't know. Yeah. But if possible, I'd want to substitute that one because, from my opinion, and from a lot of the feedback that I've received from the community, um, that that street's a lot. Um, it's a lot worse in wear and tear. Plus, also when I drove down Brenneman, there are some there. It's a street, and there are some houses and along that street. But there's big sections of it that are just kind of like empty fields. And then the, on South Palm Court, you, that's a that's one of the growing areas in in my district. And then especially around the the Ellie Circle and the the Blue Media, that's like a subdivision that's being built, all these new homes, new families, and new houses being built, and I think we'd get more bang for our buck if we did that, because it'd be providing better roads for a larger group of people. Because we haven't started the design, um, the, the list is flexible today, so I, I we'll take that under advisement, yes sir. Okay, thank you. Question. Yes. Uh, does this paper supersede what's in our, our packet? Uh, yes. Okay. That one is this one, the second one. Yeah, and so in the packet it says 2021-2022 street improvement. Shouldn't it be 22-23 in the packet? That's oh. there, there, the 21-22 list you approved back uh, last summer. Okay. okay. August, I think. Okay. The, the right here. list we're approving tonight is 22-23. Okay, got it. <laughs> Sorry. Got it. The technology. And how much has the price of asphalt gone up with the price of oil and well, petrol? We'll, we'll find out here okay. in about uh, late August. I would say quite a bit. So, uh, so I'm guessing 50, 80 percent? Uh, I would guess. The, the estimate that we have for the roads uh, that, we are finishing, that we are finishing the design of is a right about the money we have. And I don't want to disclose that because that always becomes the bid price. Right. Um, but it's about the same. Now. So when reality meets theory, reality, we may pave less footage that, that's right. of roads? That's right. And if you think of this as one list, where you can just draw a line at, at the roads we can afford and right. then pick up from there. Right. You Conversely, if you get a good price, maybe we can do more roads this year, fewer roads next year. That's why we... That's why we're always designing a set and always paving a set each year. Okay. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's logistics and materials, right? That um, I think at some point, just like in other businesses, you have, just to get the material, it'd be tough. If, we, if this commission hadn't bought vehicles you know, over the last couple of years and we, we, we bought a, 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 quite a few of them, I mean, you can't buy a vehicle right now. So I'm very happy that we bought vehicles at the time we did. So it may be the same thing, like you said. Let's find out how much we can do right now, which, which is what with what we have, because the following year is only going to get tougher and, and tougher to get just the materials. Right? And and to the gentleman's point earlier, uh, we're doing Taft from the highway, or the freeway, to Third Street, which is right at the school. Right. Next year, we'll do from that point to Commerce, which to is the rest of Taft. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number eight, consideration and possible action to adopt a resolution abandoning a dedicated right-of-way easement legally described as a 0 0.794 acre of land out of a portion of Block 12 and 13 Stewart Place Subdivision Survey 139, Cameron County, Texas, located on the north side of Expressway 83 east of Tam Road. Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, good evening. We have a proposed uh, commercial development along the north side of the expressway between Altas Palmas Road and, and Tam Lane. Uh, 
it's a, it's a new project. The property was uh, recently purchased um, by Mr. Backer from Berlogden for some major uh, commercial developments. There is a right-of-way easement that runs east and west that was dedicated 101 years ago that needs to be abandoned to facilitate the commercial development. When the uh, expressway was built back in the 60s, that made that right-of-way easement uh, obsolete. So staff recommends approval. So, so the right-of-way is empty? Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, let me show you a picture. That's the aerial photograph of the property. That's the location of the right-of-way easement. And that's the photo. The, the easement grounds like this. Uh, there's nothing there. Um, I meant underground. No, there's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Any so. discussion? You have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, consideration and possible action to approve the preliminary ranking of the insurance consulting firms for professional consultant services of insurance for employee benefits. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and City Commissioners. We went out for our RFQs for professional consultant services for windstorm. I'm sorry. I mean, that's the next item. For uh, employee service uh, benefits, we had six respondents. Each respondent was individually evaluated. And the highest ranking firm is Hub International in first place and McGriff in second place. Uh, we are asking for the commission's assistance in selecting the firm and authorizing the city manager to negotiate a contract with the recommended firm. What is Hub? Hub is, I, I don't know the. I mean, are those initials of a yes. firm? Yes. Okay. Is there any discussion? Are they located here or they're regional or? Yes, the hub is actually located in Texas. Their main office is located in El Paso. And they have offices down here? Um, not, a, not that I noted here on, on the list. Commissioner, the, uh, the company would actually assist us in getting major medical and some of the other uh, ancillary uh, policies that we provide. So uh, once they do that, then they're pretty much done with their work. Yeah, I, I'm on their website now. Did you have a question, Commissioner Mesmer? It's all been answered. Oh, okay. I was waiting on you. Sorry. Is there any other discussion? I have a question on is this is this um, who did we use last year? Uh, McGriff. <clears throat> and, and is that who you're recommending? I mean, McGriff came in in second place. No, they're not recommending. Okay, and um, why is that? And just the scoring that was done. Okay, can you explain the scoring? Sure. Because what I want to know is. Was it objective? Was it subjective? Was it uh, performance driven? Or was it somebody's opinion? And who, who, who was made up of the, the, the panel that, yeah. that ranked? The, the panel was made up. Do you have that in my packet? Is that in yes, my packet? everything is in the packet. Um, the, um, the actual panel was made, out of, made up of Josh Ramirez, Robert Rodriguez, Efren Fernandez, and myself, Oscar Salinas. Okay, um, and and tell me where the the company we've been and how long have we been using the co previous company? Um, I believe it's been several years. Uh, McGriff has uh, we've had a good good response from them. It's been about about six years. Since yeah, we've used McGriff. <coughs> Now, there were some years that we didn't go out for bids. We just and and they, did, they did they perform poorly? And I just want to know how they got outranked uh, and how. The company you're recommending um, out, outperforms them, and uh, you know how did value risk score so low? What what was the problem with them? What was the problem with uh, the one that scored even lower than that, or the Barrett at 82? Yeah. Again, were, were they performance-driven measures? Um, the the rankings were. Um, 
Uh, Commissioner, they were just... They were no, no, I, I, I know. I want him to <laughs> tell me how he came up okay. with that. Yes, the, the rankings were uh, divided into, like, the overall understanding of the scope okay, of the project. So again, the, please, please, if you can please, please tell me how... Um, Okay, let's the first answer the first question of between who we used last year and who you're recommending now, how is that one better? Okay. How did they outperform the, the ranking? It was just based on the ranking, and that's what we are here for, for, for your input and assistance in making the decision. No, I understand it. But how did you come up with them outscoring the previous person? If we look at the tabulation, there is a... Yeah, there's a score One, sheet. How did you come yeah. up with the score? The score sheet was provided through purchasing. Well, do you have a breakdown of that? How, how they came up with that number? It should be in your packet. I have I have the numbers. Yes, but the actual score sheet should be there too. Mayor, may I say something? Yes, go ahead. It seems to me you either trust these four employees to do their job, or you'd better fire them. Um, I mean, you, we put them Mike. to work, and they came up with something, so let them work. Mike, I want to know how they came up with it. It's a, it's a fair question. How, was it performance driven? Did they not do their job? Were they late to? Did, did they couldn't? Could they not perform? Were they, are they not bonded? We're did buying they... sausage. We're not asking how it was made. Let's, let's just stay. Let's stay on, on, on point. It looks like, based on the on the rating, it was ninety seven point five, right? Previous. Yes. For McGriff and Hub is 98.25. It doesn't seem like a substantial change. It's not a change. substantial. Some of the, depending on how and who scored what, it might just be uh, how they, they perceived the, let's say, their, their knowledge or understanding of the scope of the project. Um, okay, so, so that's to my point. If somebody's, again, and they haven't been doing business with us for 20 years, but they've been doing our, our, our evaluation the last four or five years. And they've done a good job. Unless they really screwed up, I mean, for one, somebody to be subjective, you know, I don't like the way they filled out that application. I'm going to ding them on that, which is what happens. And that, that's that the procurement process, the way we get our contracts, uh, I've always said, has to be more fair, more transparent, more exact, Understood. and not subjective, right? Because I'm, I'm assuming every one of these companies are very reputable. And it's, it's again, it's all on perception. You know, it's like our permitting process. You know, you can read the the, the ordinance or, or the, the, the the specs on what needs to be done, but if the inspector says it's different, then it's different. And that's why I'm telling you that with this panel, you know, how did we, how did that person who's been doing work with us, not, did they just not, they just did a poor job? And, and No, you know. it's not, it wasn't based on their performance either. So okay. it's based on the criteria that was developed and by purchasing as far as, you know, the, the the general understanding of the scope, the number of references, municipal <coughs> references, and things of that nature. And, and that's how maybe they got dinged a little bit more than others. Um, have they done the job? Have they kind of done a good job? Yes, they have. And that's why we are here, to ask for your guidance. Do they have an office here? You no, know, they're in the Dallas Metroplex area. Yeah, so that, that's another problem. Are there any that are local? The local representatives here. There were some. Yeah. We have some local representation. Uh, most of them are going to be uh, from the San Antonio area also, but they yes, have local. Yes, we'll most of them. They have local uh, rep representation. Uh, who are the, the local companies that submitted? Local Valley Risk out of McAllen. Mm -hmm. And that's it. The others are from the San Antonio. El Paso, um, Austin area. And, and, and again, my... Excuse me, excuse me. Point of order, this is Frank. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, sir. good. <laughs> Mr. Salinas. Yes, sir. Uh-oh, he's got the look. All right, here's, what, here's my information, which I got this yesterday when I picked up the packet. Barrett is out of McAllen. Gallagher is out of Austin. McGriff, which is... Scott Gibbs is out of Addison, which is the side of Dallas. McGriff, Gibbs, they have, they have been the consultant for Harlingen. 
for the past 14 out of the past 15 years. You gave him 100, just like Mr. Fernandez, who's on his way out, okay? And I questioned Mr. Fernandez a year ago, okay? And he couldn't answer. One of the programs I tried to do for the city of Portland that has fallen on the deaf ears and I'm restarting again, is trying to get a wellness program, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Serna brought it up and he told me specifically he was gonna to talk to the insurance consultant to see what how we can implement it. When I pressed him, he came back to me asking me to, to tell him how this wellness program would help the city of Harlingen. Mr. Fernandez, on the other hand, was going to go out for bids to save us money. The wellness program that I had in place, or well, not that I had in place, the one that I'm asking for, for you guys, and I'm referring to staff, to look and check out the numbers and make sure it's doable. By my estimates, it would have saved the city of Harlingen $360,000, $600 per employee, okay? Mr. Mr. Fernandez, who's on his way out, wanted to have bids. That's twice he's on his way out. Save us more money. You can ask him, but I don't think anything was ever done. So I'm sorry to tell you or correct you here, but Barry is out of McAllen, and so is uh, this value risk is out of McAllen. Everybody else, the closest uh, would be Gallagher out of Austin. And one of the things I need to remind my fellow commissioners that was brought up to our attention not long ago by Mayor Boswell and Dan Serna, the city manager prior. And I quote, you voted for it. Zero consideration was given to us, was given to the fact that staff led us in one direction and we had a choice between one, two, and three. And whether we chose one, two, or three, it was already set up. In this particular case, which is something I've been harping on since August, I would disregard the top three that everybody's leading us toward and go with either Valley, Valley Risk out of McAllen, who had the contract for a very short period of time, or Barrett, which is both of these <coughs> groups are out of McAllen. That's my opinion, sir. I appreciate you taking the hits for uh, Mr. Efren uh, Fernandez was on his way out. And yes, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be working in Brownsville in the very short near future. Okay, so. so Mayor, the, the, yes, and that is correct. Uh, Barrett does have local representation out of my county. So, so again, so what, what bothers me sticks out is that, you know, both of those companies got scored perfect scores on it, right? Uh, they got hundreds, and then the other ones are way below it, 65, 55, and I, and I really would like to see what that is. So I'd like to make a motion we table, and, and I'd like to get some more answers, and we can look at that at the next meeting. Second. But before we vote, uh, Frank Morales, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I am on point. You said that it cost the city over $300,000. Uh, where did you get it your data from? It would save the city. $360,000. Okay. Uh, where did you get your this data is, for 360000 The whole premise of, of this wellness program is to save $600 per employee. That's where I get $360,000. And how do you we get six hundred employees that sign up on the average of $600. I have presented that to uh, the assistant finance director. I've yet to be able to set up a meeting for Mr. Uh, Gonzalez so he can be on a Zoom and he can partake on that presentation. We've had elections, we've had uh, little odds and ends that have come up. Now we're back to square one, which means, sir, you yourself can be part of that Zoom so you can observe it and ask the questions. And if there's another program, another wellness program that can save us money, please, let's use it. Why? Because I believe, and I might be wrong, if we have a wellness program, these insurance companies that we're looking at, or this insurance consultant will bring up, they will see that we're proactive in trying to reduce our risk. Meaning what? 
hopefully we will have a reduction in how much we pay into our insurance. By the same token, the city saves money and the employee themselves walks away with 50 to $75 more in their pocket. But the decision will be made later because I need Mr. Gonzalez, maybe yourself, maybe the new HR person to look at, to sit for this bill, crunch out the numbers and present it to us to make sure that what I'm saying is correct. Or if there's something better, let's open our minds and stop getting out of this box that we have to keep things the same way. That's all I'm asking for, Commissioner Mismar. Okay, Mayor, so Mayor, we have a, a first and a second. I, but I do, be, before we vote, I want to make sure we can, um, Gabe, I can get with you sometime next week to look at that uh, as far as the, the rankings and how they, yeah, we, we, we can sit down and talk about it. We do need to make a decision at the next meeting because we're getting short on time. So That's fine. I get it, I, but it, it's just, you know, how does somebody score 100 and then somebody else on the panel gives them a 55? You know? What you can also do is just bring in some of the consultants that you'd like to see at the next meeting and have them present to the commission. Gabe, I had a quick question and you partially answered it. So when is the deadline that we have, because we, we're always tabling, so by next meeting we have to get it done. Next meeting, yeah, we definitely have somebody on board. We can when's call, a, we can call a special meeting. meeting. Um, well, we have to have the insurance on board for the budget discussions, and we're working on budget now, so um, we might have to, to reduce our timeline that we normally have to solicit uh, votes for health insurance uh, by two weeks because that's what we're going to lose between now and, and so, the next meeting. Yeah. So would it be a good idea to do like maybe a special meeting like mm -hmm. Richard suggested so we won't lose so much time? We, we can. We should have a renewal proposal from um, our current medical provider sometime between this week and next week. Uh, and then at that point, it would have been nice for the consultant to start working on it. Uh, but we can look at it and say, you know what, it's going to look like we might have to go out for proposals mm -hmm. or not at that point. And, but we'll have more information once we, we have that information. Yeah, I think the rate we got from, from uh, United is, is higher than what we were expecting to pay. Yes, definitely. But it was just a preliminary number. Right. right. Call to vote. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Item number 10, consideration and possible action to approve the preliminary ranking of the insurance consulting firms for professional consultant services of insurance for Windstorm. Um, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. We went out for our cues for professional consultant services for Windstorm Insurance, and we have two respondents. Each respondent was individually evaluated, and the highest ranking firm is Carlisle Insurance in first place, and the Clement Agency in second. We are asking for the Commission's assistance in selecting the firm and to authorize the City Manager to negotiate a contract with the recommended firm. Is there any discussion? Is there a motion? Motion to select Carlisle. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 11, consideration and possible action to authorize the mayor on behalf of the city of Harlingen to enter into a law enforcement mutual aid or assistance interlocal agreement between Cameron County Sheriff, Cameron County Precinct 1 through 5, constables in the Cameron County Park Rangers. Mayor, commissioners, this is an MOU really with the county and primarily the Sheriff's Department through Customs and Border Protection. It involves Operation Stone Garden, which we are the sub-grantee of, and we provide officers working the Operation Stone Garden region, which typically runs outside the city limits a little bit. The reason for this extended MOU is they're looking at the end of Title 42, and uh, CVP feels that when that ends, they're going to have a large influx of immigrants across the border. They're going to pull most of their agents back for processing, and they're requesting this type of assistance so that we may further 
worth the county area, including up into Brownsville and all the way to the Cameron County border west side. Uh, just makes it official with all the other agencies that are listed here for Operation Stone Garden that uh, we would have that jurisdiction. Uh, I have reviewed it with uh, City Legal and uh, we're recommending approval. Any discussion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. That concludes our meeting. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us tonight.